Okay. okay. So I am Mary Ann Ashenbrenner, and I am presenting today about uh, building an e-commerce website. And I am, spent, I've been wanting to do this presentation for a long, really quite a long time. And it took me a while before I got a couple really good websites and good examples going. So this is the time to do the presentation. Um, my company's Waterlink Web, and I build websites, custom websites for clients all over the country. And um, and it, you know, some are e-commerce, some are not. But this is this is the e-commerce presentation. So what I'm going to start with today is uh, what WooCommerce is, and I'm going to go briefly through some of the settings. And uh, after we've done that part, we'll have a, a time for questions, and then we'll do. Uh, I'll show how to add a simple product, and then I'll show how to add a grouped product, and uh, then we'll have time for more questions, and then I'll talk about uh, four plugins that I'm using on these sites that um, are useful for these sites. So the first part I'm going to talk about is settings. So when you first upload um, WooCommerce into a website, and there's the dashboard, it's, you know, that's the WooCommerce just loaded. Here's settings right there. And so sorry, you know, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, did, yes. you, did you want to share your screen? Oh, I'm not sharing my screen? Okay. One second. <laughs> ah, yep. share screen. There, can you guys see it now? There, you guys can see the screen? Yes. Okay. I started out, the first website I'm going to talk about is called Mountain Flower Botanicals. And it's located in, our, in um, Colorado and they raise high CBD hemp that's used really for medicinal purposes primarily. And um, this was a fun website to build. The second website I'm going to talk about is Trayvon Store. And when I built this website, it had no e-commerce capacity. It was a couple of years ago. The client, did, you know, just people come into the, to the store to buy. But he is adding an online store now. And there's, there's literally hundreds of products that I'm slowly putting in there. So those are the two websites I'll discuss today. Um, so let's go back to the dashboard of Mountain Flower Botanicals. And this, this website, I go to settings. So let's talk a little bit about settings. You don't really have to put your address in if you don't want to, um, but you can. But that's part of what you can fill in here. And then WooCommerce has coupons now. And so you can actually enable the use of coupon codes. I also have a plugin I'm using that uses coupon that has coupons, so I'm using that plugin for coupons. But you don't have to. WooCommerce has that capacity. Um, the products page. This tells you where your um, products will be shown. So I created a page called Shop All Products, and that's where where all the products come out, and you can see them there. There's also um, Here's Trayvon store. Go here and under the uh, WooCommerce settings. If you go to products, it's on the, I picked a page called online store that I built for that. So all the products are there. But there's also ways to add products to individual specific pages. And I'll show how to do that too. Um, this Mount Flower Botanicals is located in Colorado. And I think because WooCommerce knew that, it added a tax page under settings. And so you can calculate tax based on the customer shipping address. This is for sales tax. Um, and so that's the, the, that on the on WooCommerce on the shipping page, I'm sorry, there's no tax page for the Trayvon store. And the reason there's no tax page is because Oregon is a uh, no income tax state. So WooCommerce knew that. When I put in the, the general address, it knew that immediately. And so it didn't even add that page to it. 
uh, the next page is the shipping page. And both of these are a little bit different on shipping, so I'm going to talk about that. Uh, Mountain Flower Botanicals ships all across the United States. And we have set up, set up three flat rate shipping methods for them. So if you go to edit, you would go to shipping, you would add a shipping zone. I picked US, United States. And then I added shipping methods. I just add, said add shipping method. And I will show you how to edit those. So when you hit add shipping method, this comes up. I went ahead and called it flat rate orders, one to three bottles or seeds. And tax status is none on the shipping and the cost is 765. And then I went ahead and I did that for four to six bottles, et cetera. That was the, that's what they gave me. And then they also have a flat rate for clones because in the springs they do ship clones and it's a max of 21, five clones per box. And that's the flat rate for that. Um, what else do I have here? I'm going to talk about, and then I'll, I'll show you shipping on Trey Bone in a minute. It's, it's different from that. Um, payments, and I will talk about payments in a little bit later. Uh, this company is using an offline credit card system for payments because um, it's, it's because it's cannabis. Often, uh, PayPal will throw it out because they don't want to get in trouble with certain states, et cetera. So they're using this other system. And um, with Trey Bone, there's a, yet a third system they're using that has to do with their POS system in the store. Uh, accounts and privacy. This is just pretty standard. Uh, links to the privacy policy page. You can actually, uh, filled out per, per your, per your uh, type of industry. And here you'd put the name of the email you want the new orders to go to, canceled orders, et cetera, where you want those go. And then the others would probably, you know, a refunded order would go to the customer, completed order, again. That's pretty straightforward. Integration, I honestly don't know exactly what this is. This mind, Max Mind license key, I'm not sure. And we may ask, I may ask somebody in, in our question session what, what that is. And then advanced, um, this just tells you what the pages are. So the cart page is called cart. This comes up automatically. If I want to change that, I could change it, pick a different page. But I want the cart page to be the cart, obviously. Uh, there is a purchase agreement for seeds and clones that I set up and that uh, WooCommerce will let you pick a terms and conditions page too, so that you um, can, can have a, a page that comes up, they have to actually check if they've read it. And so that's that. Um, let's, let's ask if there's any questions now from people. Are you guys there? Um, I don't see anyone yet. Uh, if anyone has a question, if anyone has a question, a question. Oh. okay. Um, uh, Sue was first. So I just had a quick question about um, naming, keeping the names of the pages that WooCommerce offers you. Mm -hmm. Is there a security reason to not keep those page names? I will usually put them, if I'm not gonna use them, I'll put them in draft. So I think, as I recall, when WooCommerce comes up, it's the shop page, is the main page for all the products. But you can, um, like I changed it to a different page. So I just put that page in draft. I didn't actually leave, just, uh, get rid of it. Uh, okay. Doug, do you have a different answer, is that all? Um, I'm not aware of any security reason to change uh, the page names. I, I think if you're still, if it's still publicly access, accessible, uh, I don't see what the difference is if you change the name. I, I think if you have uh, something like a login page, that there's a case for changing the name of that. 
but you know if it's a customer login that you're linking to in your navigation then it doesn't seem like there's much it, it makes a lot of sense to try to hide it by changing the, the url okay okay that was it you guys all got that uh, uh doug ryder's got a question yeah. Hi. Hey, um, just a quick question about taxes in Oregon. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure about this, but I believe if you do have an employee who works and lives out of state, that's part of the uh, organization that taxes may apply uh, in that state. So it's not just necessarily free shipping all the way, but I would always uh, just check with an attorney, a tax attorney on that. Because I know that there's certain things they call a nexus. That's N-E-X-U-S. Where uh, if you if you do hire somebody, if you if you're shipping from a different state, also that may be the case too. Okay, that's something to be aware of. Yeah, I know that uh, that Oregon does charge income taxes even on people who live in Vancouver and commute to work in in Oregon. So I don't know that it would apply. But maybe if you're all the employees were living up there and you just quote unquote had an office in Portland. I don't know. You don't want you don't want to run afoul of the Internal Revenue Service. That's all. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. there, there are two tax services which can help that uh, can calculate automatically taxes when you check out. One of them is called Tax Jar, and the other is Avalar. They're paid for services. Uh, and I do believe that uh, Jetpack also, which is one of the onboarding processes they have uh, when you start up a WooCommerce site, that they also have the ability to handle taxes on these things. Because uh, I have a couple of WooCommerce sites, but they're all out of state, you know, so I have to kind of deal with that badness. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me show you a little bit about how this comes up in products. So. If I were gonna buy a tincture, say, let's say I'll get this one for $20, add to cart, okay? I go to my cart and we talked about, I showed you how to do the flat rate, here it is. I can pick one and that way it, it works as far as charging me shipping. So, that's something that is how flat rate shipping works for this website. And I'll get out of that. Okay. And then let's go to Trey Bone, where we did a little bit different shipping system. So Trey Bone does not ship, <laughs> but they will deliver in the 97203 zip code. And if it's if you order less than $30, it's $5 ship, uh, delivery fee. If you order more than that, it's free, which is great because you can get that big bag of dog food brought right to your house. You don't have to go fetch it. So um, to do this, I added the shipping zone and I picked Oregon. And then it let me have a chance to pick zip codes. And I picked 97203, which made it super easy. It was like way easier than I thought it might be. And then, so I picked up, um, there's pickup in the store or at the curb during open hours, okay? And if I go to edit that, you can see there's no charge for shipping on that. I just added it there. There's flat rate for delivery on orders up to 29.99 the 97203 zip code. And that's where the $5 is. And there's free delivery on orders, $30 and over in the 97203 zip code. And there it is. So that was, it was pretty straightforward on adding it. I edited the wording a little bit after I experimented with it on the site. So we can go back to the site and we will buy something. I'll buy online store, dog food. And let's get one of this stuff, Appalachian Ranch, and I'll show you how that works. I'm getting one of those. 
add to cart, view cart. Now it knows where I live. It knows I'm in 97203 because I'm kind of, I'm logged into this website. But here, I, I, if I had ordered more, I would, I would pick this one. In fact, let's see if I could change this. Let's make this update cart. I still, if I want delivery, I'd have to click it. And then I, in checkout, there's a place to leave notes. But when I check out, it also asks for my address. And so the, the, the store owner would have the address. Let me get rid of these. I don't want it recorded. Okay, any quick questions on that at all? Uh, Dean's got a question? Yes. Hey, Marianne. Um, yeah, quick question. Uh, in both of the cases you just showed, the uh, consumer was the one that had to choose the, uh, the shipping. Is there a rules um, algorithm that's either built into WooCommerce or you get an extra plug-in for that? Because it seems like, for example, the last one you just did, you ordered you know, 80 or $90 worth of stuff, shipping is free. They shouldn't have to choose that. It should automatically pop up. Um, they have to choose something. So, um, I don't know the additional plugin that does that. I know my clients are comfortable with what is working and they haven't had any problem with it. So, okay. you know, for example, the client uh, Mountain Flower Botanicals, if somebody ordered, you know, 10 bottles of the tincture and they said they were only ordering three, she would catch that before she processed the credit card because she has to hand process those credit cards because of the way we got the billing set up. So for her, that works just fine. Um, if it didn't, then I'd have to work on a different solution. But that worth, what does Doug Ryder have to say about this? You do some e-commerce websites. Still there, Doug? Hello. Um, I think there is an option in WooCommerce that if free shipping is available, it should default to that, if that's what you're... Okay. Uh, somewhere. Yeah. There, uh, uh, hi, this is David here. There is a way of doing conditional um, stuff. The, um, so there is a plugin that does that. It's like conditional WooCommerce payments or... I've used it for payment methods before that if these particular products are being inserted into the cart, don't allow these payment methods to occur. And Dean, there's also functionality in there that, that lets you decide on shipping. For example, uh, these products can only be shipped by UPS second day. Uh, these particular um, things that are in this, that's the nature of it. It's very conditional, but you can really break down the rules. Used it in payments, haven't used it in the shipping, but I know it's there. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, I just want, I just wanted to mention, um, there's one called dynamic pricing, which I've used. Uh, so you might want to check that one out. And I think that it's been a while since I've made any changes uh, with this plugin, but I think it allows uh, for a lot of options. Okay. It's always good to, I, I write down all the tips I get and then I check them out later. Okay. So let's talk about adding a simple product. And I'm actually going to demonstrate how to add products today because I think sometimes when you're new, you're like, how do I add products? So it's like, it's a little confusing, especially if you have um, different sizes of the same shirt, for example. Uh, how do you add those in? So I'm going to start with tray bone here and just demonstrate. Well, actually, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do the simple product on here on Mountain Flower Botanicals, and I won't actually do it. But then I will add a grouped project to uh, Trayvon's site, just to really give you an example. So we're on WooCommerce and uh, we have products. You would just go to products and then you go to add new. It's that simple, okay? I'm not gonna add new, it's a live site. But, so for example, um, what's something I like here? Okay, so this rip, uh, this CBDA hemp extract bomb. So that was the name of the product. And I know that's a long URL, but it's what the client wanted. So that's what it is. Um, 
when you're adding a product, this section on top here actually comes in underneath the product. If you scroll down, this section here that says short description comes in on top. So that can confuse people a little bit. I'm going to show you how that works, how that looks in real life. So if I click on this product, give it a second, it'll happen. There we go. Okay. So you see this extra, this is all this information, extra strength, hip extract, etc. This is the regular strength one. Let me go back to the extra strength one, all products. Okay, this is it. Okay, so I have, the, I have the title of the product in there. And it's taken a second to come up. There it is. Okay. Here it says extra strength and extract. This is all this information you see here, including this, the attached PDF. That's all right here. And there's a certificate of analysis right there. And then I added also this great pricing thing, and that's set up with um, a specific background color, which is set up right here. So just to let you know that if you want to see what's on the very top, see this description? It's right here. Hemp extract bomb 1400. It kind of repeats itself, but there it is. Um, I recommend you put a good description in your products and because it's what helps them come up in search results. So, so let's say, let's say you're adding a product, you got, you got in a, at least a short description. Okay. Which is a, the one that comes up first and then you put the price. It's just a simple product. You will put in an image which is going to be the main product image. And then you can put in a product gallery, which is just more pictures. So this is the back of the bottle. This is a label. This is, uh, let me show you what it is. So you go back here, back of the bottle, label right there. And then this is their whole uh, rules about testing, etc. cetera. Uh, the test results, everything it has in it. So you know what you're getting. Okay, let's go back to here. And then after you've got that done, you wanna pick what category it is. So if it's a bomb or a shirt, you have a specific category and that's, there were a couple of items that this client had that were just like one item, then it was an own category. I said, you know, you got to pick a category that we already have. Let's not pick a, a new page for that. And it worked out actually really well for her. So think about what real um, categories you have and have that kind of figured out before you start building the website. And you can also add tags. Um, so that's, and then you just hit update <laughs> and then it shows up on the shop all products page. But you can also make it show up on a specific page. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna show you. This is shop all products, okay? And everything is on here. We put a little bit of information before, and then we, we have it sorted price high to low or low to high. Um, this is the bomb that I was just looking at. But there's also a bombs page right there. And again, I put a little bit of information at the beginning. So how do I add them just to the bombs page? That's all that is, a, is a two different bombs and the samples that she has. You go to edit page. It's going to take a second here. There it is. Okay. So you see this? 
There's two different ways. This is a block type, and it allows me to put in two columns, three across, and I've forgotten what it was. Give me a second. Let me go in here and look for it. And it is something with WooCommerce. WooCommerce, look, look at all these. This is a featured category block. That's what it was. So the block type is featured category. If you click here, you'll see that. And so then I just pick the category. And the category is going to be the uh, bombs. And I did that at the very beginning when I was, when I was setting it up. So I'll show you how. We'll, we'll, they, we'll pretend we're going to do one. I won't make save the changes though. So featured category. And there I picked the category right there. And then it showed up. I'm going to go ahead and remove this block. So um, any questions on, I guess it's two things we covered. We covered how to add a simple product and then how to set up a page that has just specific products on it as opposed to the shop all page. Any questions on those two things? Um, Dean, you still have your hand raised. Do you have a new question or was, oh, uh, does anyone else have any questions? I have a question. Okay. Uh, who, oh, sorry. Um, I was, so you just set up, you just added an additional field to this page that indicated the category? That was a good, a good, it did really add an additional field. I use Gutenberg blocks in all my WordPress websites. And when you do that, these are all the blocks you have to choose from. There's, there's a lot. But once you've added WooCommerce, you see all the WooCommerce blocks? Yep. So on some of these pages, I'm just using a featured category. And there's a couple of them I'm using hand-picked products. Okay. Or I could do products by category. Products by category would, would again, you just pick a pro, uh, the category you want to have. But there's reviews you could put in, uh, product search. I mean, there's blocks here I haven't used, OK? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all products. So that, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so it's just one of the, once you add WooCommerce, these other blocks are available for you, and then you play with it a little bit and see what works for you. Okay, I'm going to leave this page. I'm going to actually close out of here. Okay, um, Anil has a question for you. Yes. Um, Anil, you can go ahead. I think you'll need to unmute yourself. Marianne, the layout you have oh. there, is it unique to a theme or this is how it is? Because if the text on the right side is long, it really messes things up because you have nothing underneath in the images, a lot of blank space, and the right side you have this little area with a lot of text. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, how do you overcome that challenge? Okay, that is, that's a good question. So let's go back and look at bombs again. So my client wanted the text long. It is long, but there's still the add to cart. Um, the advantage, there's, you know, there's, there's advantages to having it short. If it's nice and short, then what happens is the client finds the buy now button real fast, okay? And that's an advantage. On the other hand, uh, this is not an expensive product and she really wants to explain what it does. And if somebody is looking for CBDA hemp bombs or CBDA bombs, Google is gonna look at all this content and say, this, this is really a good result to show them. So that's an advantage to having more content. And people can, you know, we can debate that, but uh, 
that's why I put more, con you know, I didn't fight her and say, oh, we have to keep this way shorter for that reason. Oh, can I add something to this? Yes. Um, I actually work a lot with Elementor page builder and I don't know if you, you could probably do the same thing with Gutenberg, but I have a client that has a, a, a ton of different options, which makes that field on the right very long. Mm -hmm. And so we loaded a gallery of similar products. So you can pick other content to add into this column on the left underneath here. Under here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it helps to fill up the space and balance it a little bit more. And it can help lead to other sales as well if you put the right content there. Right. Uh, related products is what uh, WooCommerce just puts in automatically. But yeah, you, I could. I could I could add more product pictures in here, potentially. I, but I'm happy with what it is right now. And on a, a lot of people are shopping on cell phones. So on a cell phone, there's no big empty spot on the left, is there? There's just some really good information about what it is and then the add to cart button. So, okay. I think I've done that. I think we're gonna talk about how to oh, add. I'm sorry, we got some more questions. Oh, okay, sorry. On. Um, Anil, I assume you, uh, you just have your hand raised from the previous question. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. Did you have another question? No, I just could not remove that raised hand. Okay. All right. I, c I think I can do it for you. All right. Okay. Um, Lee is next. Hi, Marianne. I just had a question. Are any of these sites tied to any kind of inventory management? How is that handled? That's a good question. Uh, this site, the Mountain Flower Botanicals, is not. Okay, so we just leave that blank. Uh, the Trey Bone site, which I'm going to go into next, um, he has a point of, point of sale system at his store called Clover. And he doesn't use the inventory management system on Clover. If he did, if he had used the inventory management system on Clover, I would have used a plugin called Equid, E-C-W-I-D, and it would have connected with that inventory management system on Clover and would have brought in uh, an e-commerce uh, inventory system here. But, um, he doesn't. And so I tried to use Equid and it just was a mess because it kept expecting inventory management, which he chooses not to do that in this, you know, with his Clover POS system. So therefore I don't have to worry about it on these two. So no, neither of these is tied in an inventory. Um, okay, Dean, Dean has a question. Yeah, um, uh, first off, on the uh, add to cart button, um, I appreciate you want long text and descriptions, but can you have multiple add to cart buttons for a product? So maybe one right up at the top where if the people are reordering, they, they just click away? I could put in a link. Well, I don't know. WooCommerce won't do that automatically. Okay. Okay. And the, the second question, which may get into something you'll talk about a little bit later, um, I'm, uh, I'm looking at um, an opportunity, uh, pr a project with a service model. Um, and we see these sites where, in fact, you see this with uh, WordPress plugins, where you can get the personal version or you can get the, you know, the, uh, the company version or the enterprise version, and they've got these things in columns kind of next to each other. Does WooCommerce support that, or should I be heading a different direction for that? So not a, not a product, and also kind of this side-by-side -side comparison, or side-by-side -side choosing. I'm not, I'm not sure I have enough information to answer the question. Okay. Um, let's talk about that at the end. Okay, great. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll upload a picture in the chat. And I know we're not doing the chat, but, but 
Yeah, that okay. works. That, I, I just didn't visualize it in my mind. Yeah. No worries. Thank you. Okay. So how oh. to add a group. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> another question. Had a question. <laughs> yep. Uh, yes. I, uh, hi, guys. I uh, am echoing a question from Hun Park. Uh, basically, are you paying for any plug-in subscription fees or anything like that with this setup? I am. And I'll talk about the plugins I'm, I'm paying for later. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. We're almost on that. First, we're gonna first we're gonna create a grouped product. So with Trayvone, he has grouped products. And he has, for example, there's three different sizes of the Econa Appalachian Ranch, three or four sizes of everything, two or three sizes. And you don't want each one showing up. Because you know we got four and a half pound of this one and take up a whole row and they have to scroll down through so many there's going to be a lot of products anyway. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do a grouped product, which is actually really easy once you once you know how. So we go back to products. We're going to go to add new. I'm going to actually add a product here. So give me just a second. And this is Canada, Canada Day, All Life Stages. Okay, so I'm not gonna put anything in this box because I know it comes up way uh, down the page. I will put in this box, but first, because I'm adding a grouped product, I don't say simple. I say it's grouped, okay? And I don't really have a skew on a grouped product because in his Clover POS system, everything is, um, is, has a special number and the group, there's no grouped product. So the four and a half pound bag is gonna have a different number than the 15 pound bag. So I'm just gonna do this. Okay, and then I'm going to go to their website and I see if they got this stuff here. I'm going to copy it in there. Oh, wait, wrong one. And there it came across just nicely. And I'm going to write a little header there. And then I'm gonna to go to their ingredients, which they have right here. And I'm gonna add it in. Okay, so now I have a good description and list of ingredients for the product. I have created the grouped product SKU. Um, I have a product image already uploaded that I'm now going to add to the product. And that's it. I'm going to add an alt tag to this image too. You guys know why uh, you add an alt tag? Well, I'll explain it. You want to always have an alt tag on every picture you put in because it allows people who maybe don't have good internet, the picture's not coming up, or people who can't see well to read. Their screen reader will actually read that, that uh, um, picture. It also allows Google and other search engines to know that this isn't just some random thing, it's a picture of the back of the bag. This case. Okay. Add a gallery. Okay, so now we have a main picture, we have a gallery product picture, and this is dog food, dry dog food. I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Okay, so this is published, but it really needs to have the other products added to it. 
So now I'm going to go to add new again. And this is going to be, let me see what size I'm going to put in. I'm going to put in the five pound bag. Okay, and I don't want this to show though. You know why? Because if I do have it show, there's going to be the grouped product picture of the full that's supposed to have everything, and then there's also going to be this five pound bag hanging out there on the shop all products page. I don't want that. So I go here where it says catalog visibility, and I select hidden. Okay. I again give its category, dog food, but it's hidden. You will see it, but not uh, unless you click on the grouped product, the main product. I'm still going to add an image. And why do I do that? Because if I, if I do, then when you put the item in your cart and you go to your cart, there will be a little image there. If you don't add an image on this hidden product, there won't be any uh, image in the cart. Now here is where I need to put down the price. The price of this uh, five pound bag is $13.99. And I also need to, here's my, I have another spreadsheet with all the pricing and everything. So $13.99 and I, then this is what connects with Clover. That is the actual SKU number for that product. And I'm just going to put a brief thing here. OK, so we have, we have added a picture for it. We've put in the SKU. We've put in the price. And we have. Uh, given it a category of hidden it. So I'm going to go ahead and publish it. And I'll do, I'll do two more on this just because I can. Okay, so here's this, I'm getting this other. Okay. Okay, so this is, that's a five pound bag. I'm going to do one more simple product and then we'll add them together. This is the 15 pound bag. Okay, and again, it's hidden. And again, it's dog food. And I'm going to add the same product image I added before. Set product image. And I'm going to put a price in here of, what is the price? $33.99. And then the inventory code. And it's the 15 pound bag. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and publish this. So now I go back to the original grouped product as soon as this gets ready to go. All products. And you can see the can candidate all life stages right here. We have the five pound, the 15 pound. I'm going to edit this. And this is a grouped product. So when you have a grouped product, you can then add linked products. So the first one was a five pound bag, wasn't it? It's probably gonna be a five pound bag, all life stages. 
And the next one was a 15 pound bag. There it is. So we have all that in there and we now go ahead and update it. And then we'll look at it on the shop. Make sure we did it right. There's actually a third size of this. So I'm just doing two for now. I'll do the third one later. So this is the product right here. And there's everything I put in and you can pick Pick that, or pick that, and uh, go to Add to Cart and go from there. And I'll show you how it looks on the dog food page. Dog, oh wait, it's not dog food. Dog food right here. So there it is. And then you could click, I'll view all the products here. Or you could click on here and it'll give you a chance to really look at the, at the bat packaging. It blows it up a little bit so you can look at it. So um, that's how you add a grouped product. So any questions on adding a grouped product? Um, I don't see any hands. No, everybody understood that. Just like that was so good. I this demonstration was so good. They just have no questions on it. You're all good with that. Uh, some of the other reasons you'd use a group product. Let's say you have products that could normally be, if they're purchased together, um, that makes sense. And so you might, let's say it's a, a guitar and a case. So you might group those products also it doesn't mean you have to hide the case you could have the guitar guitar cases on another page with all the different guitar cases but uh when they went to purchase a guitar you could have a case that matched that perfectly as a grouped product on there they don't have to buy it they would just come down here look at it and then they'd see that there was oh guitar case also so when they went to potentially buy it they would see it I'm going to show you how this looks in the cart. So here's the cart. You can go to view cart. There it is. And because I added that other picture when I was adding the simple products, that's why there's a picture here. If I had not added that other picture, there wouldn't be a picture here. And this apply coupon code is coming in from WooCommerce because I have that checked on WooCommerce. I'm gonna get this out of the basket. Okay. So I'll show you where that is. Hold on here. WooCommerce, we did it in settings. I think it's products. Where was it? Someplace. Yeah, um, no, it isn't. Well, there's some place in WooCommerce where you can, um, where you just check a button and it shows the coupon code thing, the box comes up. I forget where that is right now, but it's in there, <laughs> trust me. Um, let's talk about payments. So the easy schmeasy one, is going to be um, PayPal. And it's a go-to for everybody. I have a site here, this is Friends of Pier Park. We have it set up easy smeezy, it's PayPal. I'll show you how they did it. WooCommerce, settings, payments. And I put PayPal, cash on delivery and check payments. We take it all. <laughs> That's the nonprofit I work with. And so to manage your PayPal, all you do is you click in there and to get it confirmed, 
you have to have an account, a PayPal account that's set up with this email address as a connection or a email address. So that's how you set up PayPal. You set up a PayPal account, go into PayPal, start an account with a specific email address, and then you can connect your website to it using this PayPal manage button. It will send a, an email to, PayPal will send an email to the, uh, to that email and then you have to, uh, you know, go in and say, yeah, we got that. So that's how, that's how that works. Okay. But for these two others, we had two different systems set up. So on payments for Trey Bone, all of his sales are going through Clover. That's why we put in the same SKU number as he uses in his Clover website. Even though we're not integrating inventory, we're in integrating products. So to do that, there's a lovely little plug plugin called ba -ba -ba, WooCommerce Clover Payment Gateway by Zaytech. This plugin's 30 bucks a month. And my client pays this and it, it helps WooCommerce talk to Clover. And that it was very easy to set up. I don't remember exactly what I did to set it up, but that was about it. Um, put in the API key, I did a few things, but it's pretty straightforward. And I have found that I did call them. I usually, when I get some uh, plugins that are more expensive or have a cost to them, I really expect them to have somebody that answers the phone. Um, because if they don't, they maybe don't have good service. And I contacted Zaytech and somebody answered the phone. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> so it's okay to uh, call the numbers they have listed and, and find out if you actually have an answer for that. So this is WooCommerce Clover Payment Gateway. It's only really for people that are having a shop associated with their, with their online store and the shop uses Clover as a payment gateway. gateway. Um, so that's that plugin. Let me show you another plugin, and this is one Doug Ryder introduced me to, Short Pixel Image Optimizer. Um, he gave a nice presentation about it that included how to use it uh, a few months ago. And I put this on, on a lot of sites now, not every site, but definitely where I'm gonna be uploading a lot of pictures, I'll put this in because it, it sizes those pictures down. Um, for this particular Trey Bone website, I've been going online and finding the image of a bag and then, and then uh, either doing a screen capture of that image or copying the image. And, and then it can be a pretty big file. And so, I can, um, I'll size it correctly and then this um, short pixel image optimizer just fixes it. And this is not free either, but it's pretty inexpensive. So I, I, I like using it a lot. Now for Mountain Flower Botanical, I'm using a couple other plugins on there. Um, I'm using two. One is called Woo Discount Rules, and one is called Woo Commerce Offline Credit Card Processing. So I'll do Woo Discount Rules first. They have a lot of different ways of getting your specials in. So if you order um, eight products of one kind, then you can have something half price or something. If you order three, you save 30%. Uh, there's mix and match, but it depends on the pricing too. So if it's a lower end product, they um, want to still save 30%, but they don't want you to buy five of one low end and then one expensive one and get your 30% off that one. So they, I had to fix this up, but these are, um, how it's pretty easy to set them up. So I'm just going to go in and kind of describe, go through one. Okay, so this is one, and this is buy eight of this product and save 50%. So any of these, uh, these are uh, pretty low in, low price products, like in the $20 range. 
And so if it's 50%, you have to buy eight of any one of those products, okay? And it's a 50% discount, percentage discount, eight. Um, and it filters. <clears throat> this is another company that answered their phone when I called them. Um, and to this one, uh, this is by Mix and Match. And this, they could, again, it's, but it's different. Um, it's different products in this one, some of the higher end products on the site. So all these ones are included in that list. And it was pretty straightforward to just set up too. Um, and then they allow you to use coupons on this. So I'm not using the WooCommerce coupons on here because I have this one set up. Um, this is a, the summer 2020, we, she just say we disabled that because we're done with that one. But um, you can look at it anyway. It was a 20% discount. Uh, coupons and that's the coupon number they had to give you. So, uh, I mean, to enter to get the discount. So uh, she sends an email out and says, this is your coupon number. Be sure and enter it when you go to make your purchase and they enter the coupon number and then they get their price off. And they can also say how long the rule is valid for if you want to. Only for the next two weeks or whatever. And then you put in the dates. This actually allows you to put in dates in there. And that is called, let me go back to the plugins. That is called Woo Discount Rules. And I have, you get, there's a free version that allows you to do a couple rules. And then there's a, a pro version that lets you can do any number of rules and a lot more flexibility on it. So any questions on the Woo discount rules or the WooCommerce Clover payment gateway. No, nope. doesn't look like there's any questions. Okay. So I only have one more plugin to talk about, and that is the WooCommerce offline credit card processing. And because my client is in the cannabis industry, even though her products, you really can't get high on them. Most of them have such a small amount of THC, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do anything. Um, they're good really for like ointments and stuff like that. But um, still, PayPal, Stripe, all these other payment gateways don't let her processor products on it because of the cannabis. So we are able to use this one and um, I'm gonna visit the plugin site here. Offline credit card processing. This is a, I'm very pleased with this plugin. Again, they answered their phone. I, something like this, I don't want to uh, put it on my client's site unless I know it's well supported and secure. So how does it work? So basically what it does is some of the credit card number comes through in the uh, orders. So if we go to, let's see, WooCommerce orders. Here's some orders on the site. And some of them do not come through in the order, some of the numbers. They go through in an email to the client. So um, it's not all in the same place. It's never saved on the same item. So even if somebody managed to hack into this website, they wouldn't be able to use the credit cards because there's only part of that information is here. So, uh, and she uses a Gmail account for her credit cards, a different account uh, email. So questions on, on that? on the offline credit card processing. No questions? Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, okay. Well, that is what I had to cover today. <laughs> so, 
Oh, Doug Noyle, raise his hand, Doug. I had to find the ever elusive mute button. Um, I want to hear from Doug Ryder about the uh, Stripe versus PayPal. Um, because it seems the simple way is to set up PayPal. Um, is Stripe free? And then have you had a PayPal experience that has been a problem? I'm just curious. Um, hi, Doug here, another Doug. <laughs> uh, I use Stripe and PayPal both for WooCommerce uh, and the plugins are free to use, uh, but you have to pay um, you know, I think that's 2.9% on both of the products and it's an extra 30 cents for each transaction. So the payment comes from just the amount of money they take out of the purchase. Uh, but I've had some issues with PayPal. Um, sometimes it's easier, as I mentioned, I think I have European clients that use PayPal because they treat it as their bank account. They don't have credit cards. Uh, so it makes it much easier for them to use PayPal. It's much more common outside of the U.S. and they're pretty wide, worldwide. So it's not a bad thing to have both. Um, you know, I, I prefer Stripe because it's just an easier setup. PayPal can be kind of painful, you know, as far as I'm concerned to set up, you know, especially the newer systems that they have. But uh, I use them both. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, if I can add in one thing here, the pricing between PayPal and Stripe are the same um, base pricing. Uh, you actually do pay, I think it's like 2.9% is where they're at right now unless you negotiate better rates. But Stripe, PayPal won't negotiate. That's one big difference. Second big difference is that American Express cards are charged 3.5% when using PayPal. And uh, nothing, there's no additional cost on the Stripe. Um, and another big thing with that is that if you do use the authorizations features within WooCommerce, meaning you check somebody's credit card before they attempt to run a $1,000 plus transaction, that's how I have it set up with one client. Um, you know, that makes sense. Check to see if the credit card is valid before running it through. PayPal yeah. dings you for those things, for verifications. And I never found out what the amount was, but never had that with Stripe. So. There's also a difference, I think, on the uh, uh, customer receiving end. Uh, I haven't checked this for a while, but PayPal goes into a standalone account. It's not really an official bank account, but for all intents and purposes, acts like that. And Stripe goes directly into a checking account. Okay, I think, hey, Mary, uh, Anil, this is a great topic. <laughs> um, Anil's got a question. Yeah, I have a long list of grievances against PayPal. <laughs> so I use, and, none, and none of them that you've won with them. Yeah, with I their resolution. It, right? Yeah, I, I use it for printing the labels. Uh, so it's it's. I think the whole idea of printing is, is pretty good. So I don't know if Stripe has that, but there's no button in there to go and find how to print a label. Uh, you literally have to Google what's the, the URL to print labels. And then you basically have to fill in that information manually one by one and uh, print the labels. And I think that the, the biggest letdown I had from people was when, when they matched uh, with Stripe that every time you cancel order, PayPal will not refund their cut. And when people complained, the CEO said, uh, you are welcome to close your account. Mm. So I, I've been considering some of the other options. So maybe it's a good agenda item for next time to maybe have a comparison because PayPal hasn't changed their site or their offering or their way of doing business for maybe 20 years now. So there must be some other solutions that are probably relatively better. I have not tried, so I can't compare. Well, this has been, I'm going to, I'm going to end my recording of the video because I know we want to have a video up online that the 
people can go back and check in later. And, and uh, I just want to thank everybody who showed up here. We have 31 participants on Zoom. Uh, and I just am really appreciative of everybody who came and thank you for this, uh, for attending and for your questions. So I'm going to stop the recording.